remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. I might be too strung out on compliments, overdosed on confidence, started not to give a crap and stop fearing the consequence. The story surgeon is back to defend women from the hate mob. Hashtag protect shonen women. None of these videos are hit pieces. I just want to stop the spread of a false narrative by debunking the videos perpetuating it. The subject is anime's biggest problem, women, by This Is Chris. I'll begin my essay now. Quote, 90% of them exist as fan service or as an accessory to the male protagonist. End quote. When he says they exist as fan service, I assume that he means they only exist as fan service. If that's not what he means, then, like I've said before, there's nothing wrong with the character serving as fan service as long as it's not their entire existence. In anime, especially the battle shown and he's showing, this is almost never the case. And then the accessory part. What does this even mean? Sage's Reign said this too. What does it mean for a character to be an accessory to another character? I'm just going to leave that in the air because it's so vague, but I'll counter like this. Whatever criteria you judge as being an accessory can probably be applied to a good chunk of the male characters as well, which means pretending that this is a women issue is disingenuous. Quote, it's rare to find a female character that has their own motives and gets their own character progression, end quote. If by motives he means one's not tied to any males, I already tackled this in my Sage video. Most characters have motives tied to another character, period. So with this in mind, male characters have motives tied to male characters too. And if a story like Naruto has over 75% males, how likely do you think it will be that a character's motive is tied to a male, regardless of gender? Very likely. As for character progression, I assume he means a character arc. As of now, he hasn't pointed out any examples, but arguably the most hated female in battle manga, Sakura, has an arc. Other examples would be Orihime, Rukia, Urza, Lucy, Nami, Robin, Noelle, and Momo. These are just women from the anime that are often criticized with this nonsense. Quote, a well-written woman is a woman with her own personality and her own motives and system of beliefs. A woman that is not there just to be sexualized and is not sexualized period, and also plays a major role in the plot. End quote. I'm glad he gave clear criteria for what he defines as a well-written woman, but you can already tell that he's holding women at a higher standard than men, which is completely unfair. Let me take this story by story. I'll start with Naruto, since it's the biggest punching bag. The boxes are personality, individual motives, beliefs, not sexualized, and major role in the plot. Sakura has her own personality, but she doesn't have individual motives. She has beliefs which are not being a burden, and that ninja are not tools. See my video, Sakura is a good character for more. And she's not sexualized. Her role in the plot is not that major, so she doesn't pass. But guess what? Most males in Naruto wouldn't pass this test either. Let's take Shikamaru, a well-loved character. He has personality, but he has no motives at all. He has no beliefs, but is not sexualized. He also doesn't play a major role in the story. I guess he's not a well-written male, unless your criteria for a well-written male is much more lenient than a well-written female. I hate to use this word, but that's sexist, right? How about Rock Lee, another fan favorite? Personality is good, but motives aren't because they are tied to Guy. Beliefs and not sexualized are a success, but major role isn't. These are fan favorite males, yet they're failing. Even Naruto and Sasuke would fail because their motives are tied to other characters, and they are sexualized whenever they go shirtless. Let's try another story, Bleach. Or he may check personality, but fails motives, beliefs, sexualized, and role. She's not well written. How about Rukia? She checks personality, fails motives because her motives are tied to soul society, succeeds in beliefs, see chapter 2, fails sexualization, and checks roles. She's not well written. How about the males? Byakuya, a fan favorite, checks personality, fails individual motives, checks beliefs, sexualization, and role. He's not well written. How about Kenpachi? Checks personality, fails motives, fails beliefs, fails sexualization because men can be sexualized by being topless and checks major role. Kenpachi is not well written either. Should I do more? Let's get fairy tale. I don't remember enough about characters beliefs here, but I believe everyone holds the same core fairy tale beliefs so I'll give them all a pass. Lucy checks personality and motives, fails sexualization, and checks role. She's not good. Urza checks personality, motives, beliefs, and role, but fails sexualization. She's not good either. Natsu checks personality, motives, beliefs, and role, but fails sexualization. He's no good. Great checks personality, motives, beliefs, and role, but fails sexualization. He's no good either. Shall I continue? This pattern will continue for nearly every anime I've watched from all of the characters. So if men are failing the standards you set for females, why is it that there's only a female problem? This lack of self-awareness and critical thinking is mind-boggling. You'd think that if someone came up with rules for women, they put the same rules on men. Did Chris even run some men through these rules? You know what this reminds me of? The literacy tests. In the 80s and 90s, the South had these literacy tests that black people had to take before being allowed to vote. If they failed, they couldn't vote. The thing is, these tests were so difficult and confusing that even white people wouldn't be able to pass. 
but these were only given to black people to hold them back. Not to be dramatic, but Chris's grading system is the literacy test for shonen women. To end this segment, a potential counter argument is that with the criteria that fits the best men, there are way more men that pass than women. Here's an analogy for you. I have a candy jar with 75 blue candies and 25 pink candies. I randomly choose three candies from the jar to eat. Which one is more likely, me having more blue candies or pink? An elementary schooler could tell you that the answer is blue. Now I'll bring it back to the subject. The blue candies are men, the pink are women, and the ones I choose to eat are the best written characters in the story. With the ratio of men to women being heavily in favor of men in most of these stories, of course there's a much lower chance that women will enter the ranks of the best written. It's ridiculous to think otherwise. I'm only one minute into this video. He says that Hero is the most infamous example. I mean, I disagree, but that's not important. He says anyone can acknowledge that they're not well written. That's so tunnel vision, because he's assuming that everyone has this ridiculous criteria for grading characters, especially women. He gives two boxes that women don't check, not being sexualized and playing a major role in the plot. Let me counter before he says anything. You remember that candy example I gave before? Change the meaning of the chosen candies to the characters that play an important role. As for sexualization, I'll start with class 1A. For hero suits, Kirishima has his bare torso showing. Sato has a skin-tight suit on a ripped body. Shoji shows off his muscular arms. Sero has a skin-tight suit. Tokoyami has a moderately tight suit that shows his muscular arms. Bakugo has a skin-tight suit that bears his muscular arms. All Might and Endeavor are ultra-muscular men in skin-tight suits. Outside of just suits, Deku shows off his muscular arms and legs a lot and was even shirtless for a majority of his muscular fight. That's a lot of sexualization. Now if you say that women have more skin-tight suits than men, I will absolutely give you that. Out of all the women in 1A, only Jiro doesn't have a skin-tight suit. Maybe you were thinking, that's not sexualization, but it is. Men having big muscles and showing them off is the way that they are sexualized. Women having big boobs and butts is the way that they are sexualized. If you're asking for men to be sexualized in the exact same way as women, that's not going to happen, and neither will the reverse. You are either uninformed or deceitful if you believe that muscles on men isn't sexualization. Socially, a muscular man is the ideal male body, while an hourglass woman is the ideal female body. So many people ignore this fact in order to strengthen their arguments. Now I'll tackle his specific arguments. He says Ochako is, quote, not much more than a love interest for Midoriya, end quote. I'll ask this question. Does she do anything outside of being infatuated with Midoriya? If the answer is no, then she is just a love interest. If the answer is yes, then she's not just a love interest. These shonen women haters will always try to reduce a woman down to being a love interest, but will never do the same for men. You'll never see these people call Ida just a friend or Bakugo just a rival. It's so hypocritical. For Momo, he talks about the major role that I already tackled. He criticizes females for often lacking confidence and having the arc of gaining confidence. But why is this trope's prevalence a bad thing? That's like me complaining about the prevalence of black characters having lightning powers. There's nothing wrong or insulting with this trait alone. So why is its frequency among a specific group an issue? It's not like it's malicious. Him saying that there's no reason for Momo's outfit being revealing, despite her explaining why in the story, is disingenuous. When he gives examples of good characters, he tries to downplay both of them. This is a tactic I've seen in my other two responses. His criticism of Nezuko is that, quote, the female lead has zero lines, end quote. Wait, hold up. Was having lines one of his criteria for a good female character? It wasn't. He's just adding boxes based on the character. He also criticizes her for being a plot convenience. I agree, but stick to the rules you laid out for a good female. You can't just change them to fit your argument. He brings up the dialogue problem with Kanao too. This is kind of disingenuous too, because she was given a clear reason for being so quiet. Maybe you could make the argument, why are all women timid or quiet? I'd respond by saying that this is generally a more feminine trait. That's like me complaining about male characters often being the loud and arrogant ones. Look at Inosuke, Bakugo, Endeavor, Black Star, Naruto, Kimpachi, Natsu, and Vegeta, just to name a few. Again, the counter would be that this is generally a more masculine trait. The examples of bad women he has are Mikasa and Historia. I don't like Mikasa either, but he doesn't explain why he dislikes her. Probably because of her ties to Eren. I don't understand how Historia is bad though. She checks most, if not all of the boxes. But because she loses importance after season 3, she's bad? This ignores the context that she became a queen, meaning she's not in the front lines, where the story is focused, and that she became pregnant, meaning she can't fight. Intentional ignorance, there's no way he conveniently forgot that. And if being written out, after serving your purpose makes a character bad. I guess Rock Lee is a bad character. 
He also says that there's not a lot of women, which is valid, but if that's the issue, focus on that rather than making stuff up. I actually tackled this in my ancestral essay to this wave, Shonen didn't fail as women. I'm also noticing that he ignores the quality of Annie, Gabby, and Peek. It's funny because they would check a lot of his boxes. I love JJK, but when people spread this narrative that it has the best female characters in Shonen, I just have to shut that down. He says that they have fully developed personalities, but so do the AOT, Demon Slayer, and Hero Women. Quote, I think creating a world where women are held to a higher standard is a great way to mirror our own world. End quote. The irony in this sentence is hilarious. As I've been saying, Chris and many others hold women to a higher standard and create all these rules for being a good female character when men constantly break those rules. But of course, they never point that out because it would harm the narrative that they're trying to push. Quote, Female Jujutsu sorcerers have to do more than their male counterparts to get the same degree of recognition. End quote. Let me rewrite that. Female shonen characters have to do more than their male counterparts to get the same degree of recognition. Look at how much effort he puts into analyzing these JJK women. He explains their motivations in detail, but notice how he didn't offer the same kind of goodwill to the other women. Did he explain Ochako's? Because I know for sure she had one. What about Annie's? What about Historia's? Or Shinobu's? And these are just the anime he spoke of. He's painting the entire battle genre as having a female problem. But if he didn't take the time to analyze the other women that he mentioned in this video, Imagine how many other women he's completely ignoring. That would make sense why he has this warped view. He's only seeing what he wants to see. That's the end of this one. As you can see, Chris made many blunders. He intentionally ignored the motivations of other female characters in the shows that he mentioned and only looked at JJK's to make them look good. After listing his checklist, he starts adding on requirements to make it harder for any female to be deemed good. He ignores the context of how women and men generally behave he disregards the concept of male sexualization. He ignores the obvious statistics and likelihoods that would explain why there are less females measuring up to men. He makes unfair standards for females that even the best men in their respective stories don't pass. He reduces many women to one of their many roles in the story, but he never does the same thing for men. This essay was horrible. The Shonen Female Defense Force rests this case. I'll end with this. Female Shonen characters have to do more than their male counterparts to get the same degree of recognition. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.